So grammar, we're going to do some grammar this morning. Are we excited about that? Okay, that's what I like to hear, that we're excited about that. Um, all right, so if you've got your Grammar Keeper's book, we're going to start on page number 98. It's lesson 40, apostrophes. I know that there are times when we see apostrophes used incorrectly. Do you just cringe when that happens? One of my, one of my favorites is when you go to a campus and you see, you know, girls, Jim, the G-I-R-L-S, and it'll be G-I-R-L apostrophe S. And one of my favorite things to do is to ask him in the front office, who is the lucky girl, you know, that gets to use this gym? Because it's just one, right? Um, or the girls' restroom. You know, what do you do with the rest of the girls if only one of them can use this restroom? I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm curious about that. So I, 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 I love apostrophes, but they sure can make us look very, very intelligent, or they can sure make us look kind of, kind of stupid, right? So let's look on page 40. The very, there's, there are several apostrophe lessons in here, and the first one has to do with contractions. Um, and if you look at the explain part of this on page 98, you'll see, and this is something that you would say over and over and over to kids or have kids say to you over and over again, what are the two reasons we use apostrophes? Contractions and possessions. Contractions and, pos and possessions, okay? If you look at what you're going to put on the board over here on the left-hand side, the box, apostrophes and contractions, you take the don't and, and make it um, a do not. So the proof is the contraction underlined in whatever it is that you're writing, Okay, so it's, it's underlined in whatever you've written, and then the proof is the two words um, that you've shortened, okay? So don't equals do not. She didn't leave yet, so the proof is did not, okay? Now, it's very, very simple. Uh, what we tell kids, what do you tell kids? Where do they put the apostrophe in a contraction? What do you tell them? Where the letters come out? is where the apostrophe goes in, okay? Very, very simple. And so that's one reason why this makes me crazy. Yeah? I know that's probably a Texas thing, but um, okay, just FYI. Sometimes you just have to, you know, rant a little bit, and that's one of my rants for this morning. I'm done. Um, Okay, so let's take a look at the conversation on the side over here. So you know, and it's good for us to practice these things, you know that with Grammar Keepers, you're going to have these conversations with kids, okay? So I'm going to ask, like, just like we did yesterday, for two of you to read the conversation um, about the contractions. She didn't leave yet. How did you spell didn't? D-I-D-N apostrophe. T. You used an apostrophe. What are the two reasons we use apostrophes? Contractions and possessions. And w which is this? A contraction. Hmm, I don't think so. It is. Prove it. She did not leave yet. Perfect. It is a contraction. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Judy. So remember that underlining the contraction in whatever it is um, that you've written um, is where you've made a grammatical choice, okay? And that's what that line stands for. I've made a grammatical choice here. And then the proof in the, in the apostrophes right above it proves that that grammatical choice is correct, okay? All right. So are we good with that one? All right. Let's go to the next page, apostrophes in possessions, okay? Apostrophes in possessions, and look at page, page 100. Here's what would go on the board. Now, okay, we're going to go through these quickly. If I were doing this with a, with a group of kids, this would probably, this would be one day, okay? Um, this would be another day. I probably would not go through all of these in one day because it is a very, very important concept. And so you know your kids well, but I suspect I would take one at a time. This one gets very tricky. So here on the left in the square is what's going to be written on the board, apostrophe and plural possessives, all of the boys' bikes. See the B-O-Y-S apostrophe S? That might feel right to a kid to do that, to make it a possessive. I just put an apostrophe S on the end. But what do we know about that apostrophe S? 
It's what? Okay, but it's also, we, also, we already have an S, right? So it's a little superfluous to have all these S's there at the end of that word. So all of the boys' bikes were on sale. And so all of the boys, B-O-Y-S, B-O-Y-S, what does that tell you? B-O-Y-S apostrophe, more than one boy, okay? B-O-Y apostrophe S would say that the one boy had a lot of bikes and he was selling all of those bikes, right? Okay, so you know, sometimes what I think, um, what I remember my first years of teaching about grammar is I felt very comfortable with grammar, but I also felt like before I taught some of these concepts, I needed to go back and review things myself. And there's nothing wrong with that, okay? So if, if you are uncomfortable with the concept, just spend a few days studying that concept before you, before you do that with kids. I think we do that with everything. We do that with grammar. We do that with literature. We do that with lots of things, that we, with everything that we teach. And so at some point, it becomes much more comfortable because you've taught it several times. So if it's your first time, um, don't be ashamed to admit that. I did some studying on this, and now I feel, feel really good about it, okay?